Please remember to take all your possessions inside the tent at night. Hyenas are prone to midnight snacks of almost anything. Awesome. <laughs> Thirty-seven hours ago, I walked out of the apartment in Baltimore, Maryland. And now, we're on a tiny landing strip in Arusha, Tanzania, and we are about to get into one of these little planes and head to the northern Serengeti. This is awesome. <laughs> Landed back here on this dirt strip runway. Amazing. I'm a little bit lost for words. We're about to get in our safari vehicle here and cruise around till lunchtime. And uh, let's go check it out. Good, thank you. We've arrived at camp, got some watermelon juice, cold towels, get some of the dust off our face, getting our luggage, and heading up to the tents. Here's my tent. There's my bed, and then a place to put my, hang my clothes, a little wash basin area, and a shower. That must mean on the other side, we do have a little toilet. Wow. Thompson Safaris knows how to make you feel comfortable out in the middle of the Serengeti. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, it's really, really awesome to have you guys here. And um, in this group, you're going to find uh, a lot of different levels here. And um, we don't want anybody to feel like, oh my God, it's you know, it's over my head or whatever, because that's not the the goal here. Is that everybody has a great time, comes away with great images. We all have fun doing it. We call it our four ingredients, which is the uh, photography, travel, friendship, and adventure, you know, and those four things really need to happen. So we're out on our evening drive and uh, we've got lions. Check it out. So here's the situation. The sun is starting to set. Uh, the light is gorgeous right now. Just beautiful golden light. Came across a couple of those lions we just showed you, and then followed them down to the spot where there's over a dozen lions hanging out different ages. We got the mamas, we got teenagers, we got young ones drinking at a water hole. Um, one of the things that these Thompson guides do really nicely is know how to maneuver the vehicles so you get the shot and you're also staying out of other people's shots the other vehicles that are here with us uh, we just have three vehicles out tonight it's amazing so far today we've seen elephants lions wildebeests hippos crocodiles warthogs impalas clip springers a bunch of really cool birds This is our first day. We only landed in the Serengeti around uh, 9.30, 10. Whew, man, this is an experience. Waking up our first morning in the Serengeti, greeted with some hot coffee. It's 
some cool animals over here. I mean, birds. Let's talk a little bit about how camp works. So we've got these tents laid out on either side of the main dining and bar tent. I did say bar tent. They have a bar here. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Everything here is brought in over these rough roads. The accommodations, as you saw yesterday, are pretty sweet. The food last night was delicious. So we got back after the lions, had a nice dinner and shower, hot showers. Um, and they ran the generator for a little while so everybody could charge batteries and hook everything up. There's also chargers in the vehicles as well, um, electric outlets. So you can actually keep everything powered up during the day or charging during the day while we're out. Because we're there's no electricity here. We are out in the Serengeti remote. It was pretty amazing to fall asleep last night. Holy moly, the sun's coming up. To fall asleep last night and just listen to mostly heard wildebeests off in the distance. It's just an amazing place to wake up. All right, breakfast is done. And our goal today is we're heading out from camp down to the Mara River where we hope to catch the crossing. These are the wildebeests that are part of their migration. Those guys are pretty much always moving, following the green grass, and we want to catch them crossing the Mara River because that's when you get those scenes of the crocodiles and just the huge, mungus herds of wildebeests. We've seen the herds. We've seen them poised at the river on our way from the airport yesterday, but um, nobody crossed. It's going to be a lot of patience. We're just going to go sit and hang out in the vehicles down there um, and hope that they cross. This is what real wildlife photography is like. I think um, some of what I described yesterday and what some people think where you just kind of go out and there's an amazing thing and you shoot it all of a sudden. No, the National Geographic stuff, the other really serious wildlife, that happens with people sitting and waiting hours sometimes days, sometimes weeks. If you ever read or watch the background of the behind the scenes, the documentaries of how they make those National Geographic shows and the shows like Life and Planet Earth, those guys spend literally years at some locations waiting for those perfect moments. So we don't have years, but we are gonna go and be patient. So let's load up. Now we are making our way along the Mara River. This is kind of the big river that the wildebeest cross that we're hoping to capture some of that excitement. Uh, right now we got an elephant, a pair of elephants back there. One's down at the water's edge drinking. You know, it's just, it's important. We're certainly trying to capture amazing images, but I find it really important for myself to put the camera down from time to time and just enjoy this because I certainly want to remember it, not just through the lens, but with my own eyes. It's awesome. Honestly, we didn't have to wait that long. One, two just went, and then that huge herd that we've been watching over there has just started to follow. They're all making their way across the river, up over those slippery rocks. Wow. Oh my God. I feel like I should put on my um, best David Attenborough impression. Uh, it's just an amazing thing to watch. So yeah, this has been happening for thousands and thousands of years, these migration of the wildebeest. What's kind of humorous is a bunch of them crossed over to this side that we're on, and now a huge group is crossing back over to the other side. In general, the flow of the migration right now should be um, in this direction towards us, not away from us. Spotted a few zebras too. So the bulk of the pack has crossed. Just something else to watch. This is where I tell you that not all of them have made it or probably will make it. Looks like some have broken legs just from climbing, trying to climb, jumping up the far bank. And they'll probably be picked off by the crocodiles later. Harrison told us that only 15% of wildebeest babies make it to adulthood. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things that prey on them out here. And, uh, that's how nature is. Harrison, thanks for that good driving. Karebo. That was fun. Sante sane. Karebo. It was cool to see. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this kind of morning adventure was when we realized that crossing was going to happen 
to get to the position we wanted to. Harrison's awesome driving skills. And he said, hold on. I knew things were going to get serious. It's so much fun to stand up in these vehicles, hold on to these bars on either side, and uh, just enjoy the ride. Now that we have that kind of river crossing under our belt, sure we'll keep our eyes out for that again. Um, but now we want to head off and see if we can find leopards or cheetahs or more lions. We made it about 500 meters or so from our lunch stop and uh, just right back down to the river where we've got a really cute family of elephants just playing. The youngest one is right down on the edge of the water. Harrison, how old do you think that little one is? He's just swishing his trunk around and they all have decided to come down to the water and play. It's kind of a tight little spot. Two to a half, up to three years. Okay. He's growing tusks. And he's got tusks? Yeah. Yeah. Tiny, Tiny tusks. Yeah. Oh, two and a half, three years old uh -huh. elephant. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Thank you. We got, we got eyes on a rhinoceros. You can't do that. Oh, I can't. We're on our way back to camp and I think this is a great place to wrap up after two days in the Serengeti. The number and variety, diversity of creatures we saw has blown my mind. Mind. I had no idea we'd see this much so quickly. The rhinoceros up on top of the hill at the end of today, I think was a great place to end. But then an ostrich on a nest was awesome as well. That wildebeest crossing, Thompson Safaris, these guides, they know what they're doing. They have been so fantastic. When you need to stop for a picture, you just ask. And uh, they, they know how to get the position too. And, um, it just works out really well. We're here for another day, and then we're heading down to the central Serengeti, where I'm told it's um, a lot different. We should see more cats uh, and uh, some other creatures. So looking forward to that. We'll be back with that soon. Thanks for watching.